Ah, the humble tea light. That staple of scratch building. Well, I don't know. You've probably not ever scratch built anything out of a tea light. But yeah, tea lights, ubiquitous. They were very, very popular a few years ago because they do this. Whoa. It's just a modern form of the word candle, really, isn't it? Why they're, were they for tea or anything? But uh, how can you use these more in scratch building? Well, talking about modern forms, what about this? Blow that out. Yeah, so what's this? It's a modern tea light. So uh, these are LEDs and uh, we can turn it on and then it's got a flame, a little LED there. Now these are so cheap, they're ridiculous. So um, I bought this one from a sort of a, a pound shop called B&M obviously more than a pound in the UK and uh, our Poundlands sell a pack of uh, maybe three of them together a bit cheaper uh, this says £3.50 but it, they only charge me 2 99 but yeah you get eight of them and these are really cool honestly um, they're good just for tea lights anyway um, but unlike a candle it's not burning anything so um, let's just have a look at what they got inside well first thing is remember i've got eight of these for three pound all right so it looks like they've got a switch on don't be fooled by that um, but let's open them up and you see the first thing they've got in is a 2032 selling it so for my three pounds i got eight 2032 cells and these are really good for leds and then of course i've got an led whoops not a normal led this is an led that flickers so if i turn it on you see it gives as it's supposed to be a replacement for a tea light you see it's slightly flickering i hope you can see that on the camera see it flickers so it gives a, a sort of a flame effect and then it's got this blob on top of it which is out of silicon rubber i think uh, see-through silicon and that makes it look slightly flame like Obviously, with the lights I've got, it's not that obvious. So you get eight LEDs, you get a flame effect thing, you get something to mount them in, and you get eight of these batteries in for this £3. That's pretty good to begin with. But look what you can do with them. Let's just go into this slightly. Change my screwdriver tip. And just pull out this whole assembly. Now, none of these are glued. Whoops, wrong tip none of these are glued either so you can tend to just be able to pull them out all right so they come out fine then you can see that is just an led there just having to push it underneath with my finger because i've taken the cover off but you see that's like a little led so that on itself that could be a cool thing to use in a scratch build project you've got a switch and you've got everything wired up for an led isn't that cool and then this bit, the flame effect bit, is just rubber, so you can just pop that out. So you can, if you want, put those on other LEDs that you've got and use that. But how else can you use these? Well, to start with, you can harvest the LED. So that's the first thing. If we look at this, none of this is soldered in, so it's all sort of push fit. So if I remove the battery, we see we've got one leg of the LED that just sticks through a hole there and we've got another LED that goes into this thing when I said don't fool don't fool yourself that this is a real switch it does act as a switch it is a switch but it's not really a switch you can reuse in anything other than this but if you look in there slightly one of these legs of the LED the other leg goes through a little hole in that switch and as it slides as you slide the switch let's zoom in a little bit more here so as we zoom the switch, it pushes the leg into contact with the side of the battery. Do you see this? This is really genius design, I think. So how to remove an LED? Well, it's not an issue at all. It's literally you just pull the leg out. And then you just have to just un unbend that slightly and out it comes so there you've got an led that you can use in another project so that's a spare led now let's just have a look at this for a minute as well now if you've got any led having one of these 
2032 cells around is really useful because you can, without the need for a resistor, just stick it uh, on both of the legs of an LED and test it as long as you get it the right way around. So that's the right way around, I think. Yeah, there you go. So I always keep one of these 2032s in my little box of LEDs. So as soon as I pull an LED out of it, I can test it like that. Now, if you look at that there, the leg that goes straight down goes to this bit, which is the negative, I think, area of the battery. So the bit that's rippled is the negative. So on this one, that leg there, the non-bent leg, it goes to the negative. And then this bit goes to the positive. So this is the leg that gets pushed onto the side of it within the switch. Let's zoom out a little bit now. All right, so first of all, we can use this lead in a project. So I don't know, have you got a book nook? A book nook, a book nook, they were really popular and there's still people making them. I noticed uh, a fellow scratch builder did a book nook thing the other day. Um, I've got one over here. I don't know whether we can see this. Now this is a project for another video, but you see this is my book nook there and uh, it really benefits from having a light inside it. So this is some medieval street scene. And you see, I've already got lights in that. So you can see it's lit inside, which is why you can see it. Um, but maybe I'll show you this on another video if I can find a way of getting it all in the frame. But if you've got sort of some windows in there, you could get one of these little lights and have it as a flickering lamp. You could even do it like a little Minecraft lamp on a wall, couldn't you? If you if you just had one of these LEDs on its own. So let's show you how I do that. So you can also buy, obviously we've harvested, we've got eight of these LEDs and we've got eight of these little flame things, not to mention eight of these batteries. But another thing that's really useful are these little uh, 2032 battery packs. Now, I think this costs £4 delivered, but it was £4 for five of them. So I've got a load more of these for my delivery charge. So obviously this, we're not using everything out of the tea light for this, but what this is, is a teeny little battery box. So let's just open it up and then we can put our 2032 in there with minus side down. So the rough side down and then click. And not only is that a battery box, but that's got its own little built-in switch as well. So let's solder this. Because you don't need to do soldering. You could actually tape this if you can't do soldering. I'm going to cut these legs down short. And we'll just do a little montage of me soldering these together. So hold on to your hats. Notice while I'm doing it, I keep the LED the, this this switch here on all the time so that I know I've got a good connection and know I've soldered it the right way because there's nothing more frustrating of soldering it all together turning it off and on and uh, and it's not working so I'll keep that on and in fact I might even put a little red and a uh, a black dot on this so that I know I'm going to get the wires the right way around so enjoy the soldering shrink on the longest wire first so to make sure that I don't forget it so it's also a long way from the heat I'll be soldering this end so if you've got some heat shrink around it's quite cheap you can buy a big pack for a few pounds maybe that's something useful you could try as well and it just protects the wires after you've soldered them
this should come on now if I've got it wired up right. as simple as this so let's take the stage lights off for a second and uh, you see there we've got a little flickering LED that we can use wherever we want so it's as simple as that so now if you've got your book nook you could thread that in through the side and put it behind the window or have a little torch on the wall you could maybe if you had a wall that you'd scratch built like that you could uh, put a little hole through it obviously it would be a taller wall than this put a little hole through it and have it there and it could be a torch in the wall you can make a little wooden stake for it to sit on so that's one way that you can use these leds so i really love these i think these these, these cases and these flickering leds are, are absolutely made for each other they're really great so of course you can get lots of different varieties of leds as well you see i've got some uh there's three mil ones you can get and you can get well that's five mil there's three mil ones you can get and you can get five mil ones the one that comes in it this one that comes in there remember this should pull off as well that's a five mil led so if you want to replace because there's no soldering involved if you want to replace the um led in this if you get a five mil LED, you can use it. So I did this recently on my uh, invisible mushrooms video, you can see here. So I didn't talk on that, but this is what I did. I got one of these uh, bases. In fact, I used this whole thing as a base and I painted this and uh, then I changed it to one of these multicolor LEDs. So literally, if you've got, hopefully you've got, sev you've got several of these already. You'll, you'll probably have at least two because I think they're too cheap to be able to buy in one go. But you remember how it how this went in. So this battery goes in first and it goes with the rough side up. So the rough side is the negative side. So the negative bit of one of these LEDs, which is the shorter leg, has to go to the rough side. And the long side is always the positive. So if you see this now, it might, might not be too clear, but you see it's changing colour. And again, I bought about a million of these colour LEDs for a, a couple of pounds as well delivered. They're so cheap, um, especially if you buy them directly from China. But this will just fade through lots of different colours. So this is just a colour changing LED. You can get some that just change between two colour, but I like these because it goes through quite a lot of different colours. So all I have to do then, if we remember this, whoops, to work out how to do this. Sorry, this battery goes upright, which is negative. So the shorter leg has got to touch the rough side of the battery, the internal side of the battery. And then the longer leg has got to go down this side hole through the switch um, and be, be able to be pushed on and off by the battery. So let's just uh, just try and begin to footle this a little bit. So what I found was the, if we keep the negative battery, the negative lead straight, and if we bend out the longer lead, like so, if we bend that out, that's how the LED is going to sit, and you have to not push it too far in, because it's got to sit proud of uh, the top of this, remember, if that's how you want to use it with this this base. And then this side needs to bend down and go through the leg of the, the, the hole in the switch. So let's just bend that down. Fingernails help with this, but you can use a little pair of pliers if you want. So that's bent it about that. That's probably all you need. Now, I discovered you don't put the battery in while you're testing this. Do this, set this up first, because if you put the battery in it, the shorter leg sticks to the battery. The switch doesn't work then so this little switch piece see it's got a little hole in there so you put the bent leg through that hole now i did find out on these leds i don't know how long these are but i did just need to chop a teensy bit off so i'm going to chop about a millimeter a millimeter and a half off the leg you see that not a lot but 
there we go so it has to be a teensy bit shorter so that's going through the switch and then the fiddly bit long leg through the hole in the stand like so and then the other leg has to go in through this hole here so because this has got to touch the battery if you see so there's just a side hole towards the switch and you push that in and then the switch you can put through the hole so if you see that now as we move the switch backwards and forwards that leg moves so once we've got that in a position that we like i'm just going to push the positive leg that goes through the switch in a little bit so you'll see it just move in there you go push that in a little bit so it's got more movement in there and then finally get the negative lead and bend it like that and then that will hold your led in so now you can get your battery pop it back in and we should if we put the lid back on this should be all we need to do now to test this this should be working hopefully the, the light's not on yet that's right oops sorry i've done that wrong the side of that there's like a little lip on these ones a little bit there the tab that goes under there by the battery that sort of springs it down now I can get in there and just tighten that up. All right, so that should work now. But these switches, you can see if I push the switch a little bit from the top, that's working. And if we hold it on, it will begin to cycle through the colours. There you go. Now that switch is a bit loose, which is why I said this switch can only really be used in these, in these mechanisms anyway. And if we look at the inside of the tea light, there's this little thing there which pushes down on the top of the switch might even go through that at the top of the switch there but it holds everything in place so if you take it like so and put it on there and then it just pops in so i see that flickered a little bit but that's because it's half on so that's the off position so that's off and then let's slide it to the on position and then it should stay on and start color cycling so of course you don't have to use a color cycling you could use a blue led you could use a white led or just a red one or a flashing led you can get you can get ones that just automatically flash and you can get them that flash different speeds you probably couldn't use lots of different leds for this because the battery is probably capable of of only really keeping one led on at once and really these multicolor leds are a bit too much for these batteries but this will still last a good few hours if you want to use it and of course because you can turn it off again on your model just means when you're showing off your lovely model you can just turn the led on and add to your display so there you go two little thoughts about how we can use these little tea lights in our models how you can reuse them how you can repurpose them the amount of parts that you get in them how you can even make them into little standalone things that you can fit into your own projects really simply but of course if you're just using these and you can get your hands on leds you don't even need to be able to solder you saw this was all push fit you just got to make sure you get the legs in the right position as you uh, reassemble it for it to work so i hope you enjoyed that if you'd like to see more electronic videos more things about scratch building please subscribe bye here's a challenge why don't you make a scratch build robot out of a tea light button i'll save those for later